Let's continue working on unit conversions. In this video, I'm going to move at a faster pace than in my previous video. So if this feels overwhelming or if you feel like you're not ready for it, just back up to the previous video where I explain things in quite a bit more detail. So for our first two examples, we're going to be doing some more metric to metric conversions. In these problems, we want to start by writing the number and the unit that is given to us. In this case, 1.445 times 10 to the fourth meters. And we want to multiply that by a conversion factor that's in the form of a fraction. On this conversion factor, we want our unwanted unit meters to be down on the bottom so that it can mathematically cancel out and we want our desired units we're trying to convert into kilometers we want that desired unit up top on the top of the fraction to get the numerical relationship between meters and kilometers we go to our table of metric prefixes we see that kilo is the prefix for 10 to the 3. That means 1 kilo is 10 to the 3. doesn't matter if it's meters or liters or whatever. And the way that we have this set up, the meter unit will cancel and we will be left with units of kilometers, which is perfect. And this is math that I can do in my head without using a calculator. 1.445 times 10 to the 1 kilometer uh, I know that that's not, that looks awkward, 10 to the 1. So I'll go ahead and rewrite that as 14.45 kilometers. Let's make sure that we have the correct number of significant figures. Remember, our answer can only be expressed with the least number of sig figs going by the numbers that we're multiplying together. So this number has a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 sig figs. And this being a metric to metric conversion, this has an infinite number of sig figs. So four sig figs, one, two, three, four, that's how many we're allowed to have in our answer. And that is how many we have. So this answer is correct. And this problem is done. And let's move on to our next one. We have another metric to metric conversion. We'll start by writing the thing that we know, 15 megagrams. We want to multiply that by a conversion factor that lets us cancel out units of megagrams. It is a lot easier, not saying it's impossible, but it's easier when we're doing a metric to metric conversion. It's easier to convert from this prefixed unit into the base unit. So rather than trying to set up a conversion factor that goes directly from milligram to kilogram, we're going to set up a conversion factor that goes from milligram into gram and then a second conversion factor that goes from gram into kilogram. Two steps, but this allows us to not have to take the time to think about what the relationship is between mega and kilo. Again, I, I know you could do that. It's not that hard, but this is definitely a fast way to go about it. So to fill in these conversion factors, we're going to look at our table of metric prefixes. Mega means 10 to the 6. So that means 1 mega is 10 to the 6. Kilo means 10 to the 3. That means 1 kilo is 10 to the 3. And again, this is math that we can do in our heads. Um, let's take a look at how our units cancel. Megagram cancels. Gram cancels. We're left with units of kilograms. And the answer here is 15 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. Let's double check our sig figs. Metric to metric is infinite sig figs. Another metric to metric is infinite. This has two sig figs and our answer has two sig figs. So this is perfect as well. Let's move on to some problems that are uh, not metric to metric. So here we have two problems where we are converting from a U.S. unit into a metric unit. And both of them, same thing. Now, when we're doing a U.S. to metric conversion or metric to U.S., we are still going to take the same approach. So we'll start by writing the thing that we know, which in this case is five pounds. And we still want to multiply it by a conversion factor that gets pounds down on the bottom and our desired unit of grams up on top. 
And we need to find the mathematical relationship between pounds and grams. Now, there's a lot of resources out there that will, go, that will give you that relationship. You will have in your textbook somewhere, no matter what textbook you're using, you're going to have a table that has U.S. to metric conversions. It might be in the cover of your textbook, or it might be at the end of your textbook, or in a data table somewhere in a chapter, but it's in there. You can also find these on the internet. So let's just pull up, let's pull up a website. I've already, um, I've already done, I just, so I just did, let me back up here. I did a search, a Google search for US to metric conversion. And I am choosing to use the mathisfun.com website just because it has the data laid out really well. This has all of the metric and US conversions that anybody might ever want. So what we're looking for for this problem is some sort of relationship between grams and pounds. And this is a, a mass unit. Grams and pounds are mass units. So I'm going to jump ahead to the mass data, which is right here. So it has quite a few um, going from metric to US or down here on the bottom US to metric. And so what I'm looking for is anything that has a relationship between grams and pounds. And what I'm going to do is just scroll so that the correct relationship now is right at the very top of the, uh, the website. And it says one kilogram, 1,000 grams, and then that red arrow, 2.2046. So that's telling us that either one kilogram or 1,000 grams, 1,000 grams, which is what we're working with, is 2.2046 pounds. And so there is the relationship that we're looking for. Now the pound unit will cancel. And when we do the math, we'll end up with units of grams. I do not ask or, or hope that you memorize any US to metric conversions. That's just not a good use of your brain space. Always look them up if, if um, you're being asked to do a, a conversion between US and metric. The conversion factors will always be provided to you or you will always have the ability to look them up. So don't, don't try to put any of those into your brain. Let's set up the next problem while we have this um, math is fun website up and then we'll go to the calculator and we'll, we'll actually solve these problems. So for our next one, we have 3.806 miles. And we want to multiply by a conversion factor that will get rid of the units of miles. So we want that down on the bottom. And we want to convert into centimeters, ideally. Now, this is going to be a length unit. So let's go back up to the top of the website uh, and find length is right here. So we are looking for, in these tables, we are looking for miles and centimeters. And the centimeter part really isn't that important. We just really need to find something with miles in it. So I'm going to scroll through these. Now I've got at the top of the website again, I've got the mile unit. I have, it says one kilometer, 1,000 meters, 0.6214 miles. So that's not perfect because it's not centimeters, but we are really good at doing metric to metric conversions. So I'm not stressing about this. I'm going to go ahead and just convert from meters. 1,000 meters is 0.6214 miles. So I'm going to do this mile to meter conversion that I got from the mathisfun.com. And then I know I feel really confident about our ability to convert within the metric system from meters into centimeters. Using the metric prefixes, we know that centi means 10 to the minus 2. So 1 centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. And when we do the math on this, our miles will cancel, meters will cancel, and we'll be left with units of centimeters. So now we are ready to actually do the calculations on this. So let's get the calculator out. And looks like we have to deal with an add. And let's crunch these numbers. Now before we, bef well, we'll go ahead and do the math first and then we'll talk about sig figs. So we have got on this first problem, we have five times 1,000 divided by 
And let's think about how many sig figs we're allowed to have in this answer before we copy the answer off the calculator. Now, in the five pound part, we have only one sig fig, and that's probably going to be what restricts us in, in terms of our answer. The US to metric conversion factors, which is what we have right here, these are not infinite significant figures. These are measured numbers. In the US to metric conversion factors, one of the one of the numbers, in this case the 1000, one of them will be an exact number and the other one will be the measured number. So in this particular conversion factor, we have one, two, three, four, five sig figs, which is obviously more than one. And so our answer can only be expressed to one sig fig. So again, with the US to metrics, you're going to have to figure out how many sig figs you have. One of the numbers in the conversion factor will be a, a one or a 100 or a 1000, some kind of increment of 10 like that. And that part will always be not what you're looking at when you're counting sig figs. It's the other part of the conversion factor that is what you're looking at for sig figs. So we can only have one significant figure in our answer. Our answer is 2267.9. We'll go with that grams, but we can only have one significant figure. And the way that we're going to change that to one sig fig is to round. 2,000 grams, or we could say 2 times 10 to the third grams. Let's do the math on the second problem right here. We have 3.806 times 1,000 divided by 0.6214, and then divided by 10 to the minus 2, which is the same thing as 0.01. How many sig figs are we allowed to have in this answer? Well, we have one, two, three, four sig figs in, in 3.806 miles. Um, this is a metric to metric, so this has infinite significant figures. This is a US to metric. Here is the 1,000. That's the number that we're not going to pay attention to. This is one, two, three, four sig figs. So that's how many sig figs we can have in our answer, because we have four sig figs here. We have four sig figs here. We have infinite sig figs here. So we're allowed to have four sig figs over here in this answer. Our answer is 612488 centimeters, doing a little bit of rounding. We're only allowed to have four significant figures. So we can round. We can go 612500 centimeters. That would be four sig figs, one, two, three, four. We could also write this in scientific notation, 6.125 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five centimeters. Any, either one of those two would be correct, a correct way to represent it. Now, again, if this felt like everything happened really fast um, and you're a little bit lost, there is a video a few videos back about counting sig figs and a separate video about multiplying numbers together and getting your answer to the correct number of sig figs. So if you need a, a, you know, a refresher on that, just back up a little bit and rewatch those videos.